can verify inputs from outputs. They're not all made like that, but they, some of them are. Like multiplexers, you might get something different. You know, so this isn't like a, but it's a good place to start. First thing you need is a wire and a 1K resistor. You don't want to go past 5 volts. You want to make sure you have a nice, stable, regulated 5 volts. Uh, if you're using a power supply, you should make sure that it's clean. If you have an oscilloscope, you should verify that. Uh, if anything, you could put a, a 104 capacitor on there, a, a 100 nanofarad across the uh, the input rail, and uh, here's a 103. That'll work just fine. So we could do that. And uh, let's see, let's get some juice on. It. And let's see, positive will go here. Negative goes here. Let's see. I need a wire going from. That capacitor over here to our ground. Okay, and we're going to concentrate on the first three pins. Now, pins one and two are inputs, pin three is an output. Uh, that's something we know, but let's verify that we can actually see that in real life. Okay, so now I got a meter here. Oh, we can actually see it, right? Good. Okay, so we're going to take our plus 5 volts. And you kind of got to be quick with it because all the inputs and outputs are floating, okay? So we're just going to go to pin 1. We should see 5 volts. That's good. Pin 2, we should see 5 volts. That's good. Pin 3, this is an output. We should see a drop. Let's go. And we do. Okay? That tells us it's an output. So now we know our pin out. And we can continue going down the rest of the chip. So pin 4 would be out. Pin 5 is an in. 6 is an in. Pin 8 is an in. 9 is an in. 10 is an output. Uh, let's see. So now that we got that done, that proves that, right? Let's go and set it up on the bench and uh, we'll do the uh, oscilloscope thing and I'll see if I can get a circuit or make a circuit that, that does that. I'll give you this command. Hell, I can draw it for you right now. Two current limiting resistors. Use 1K for 5 volts out. So you go to one rail, the other goes to the other rail. Okay? And because it's a bicolor LED, that output will either go higher or low and it will pass current whichever way it needs to go in order to light the LED, either red or green or whatever type of LED you have. And and that's it. That's the whole circuit. And that's what I'm going to make in there so you can see and that I can see that I actually have uh, a, a voltage shift on the output. So it's nice to have a visual aid along with the oscilloscope and the meter. And uh, we'll, we'll show you all that. Okay. But this is all that's happening on the board when you see the LED turning, changing colors. Okay. Both inputs are on high, which means the LED is low, indicating red. When it's green, it's high. And you can so all I have to do is take one of the inputs. You take one input low. You can see it turns green. Now, if you leave one of the inputs floating, it's kind of in the middle and it's kind of orange, and it the 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 circuit just simply doesn't know how to handle it because it's it's floating. There's three other circuits identical to this to the first one that we're using now. The other three circuits or units, they're all floating, and that's typically a bad thing. Uh, but for testing purposes, it's fine. I mean, they should be tied with a resistor either high or low. Uh, I suggest a 1K resistor if you're using a 5 volt input. I'm make a truth table now. Input A. Input B. You can make a truth table with whatever you want. You can have X's, O's, 1's and 0's. If binary scares you, you can, uh, you can use colors. You can use a marker. 
you know you can use any color any color, any color you want you can do it as long as it makes sense to you that's what matters if you can understand what it's doing then that's fine you know it doesn't matter that, that you have zeros and ones here what makes it's whatever makes sense to you so I know if I go high on input A and high on input B I'm going to get low on the output okay so the top row is going to be my output uh, I know if I go low on input A and high on input B I'm going to get high on the output if I go low on input A and low on input B I'm going to get high again all right so there's that if you can like I said it's got it all it's got to do is make sense to you okay this would be a NAND gate uh, which is what this part is but that just goes to show you that you can do it and you can verify that what you're seeing is accurate so that verifies the technique works uh, we're going to take the part off of this this is the mystery chip here and we're going to go through the same exact procedure and we're going to see if we can get it and by going through our truth table we should be able to cross-reference something that's similar to it.